Welcome back. You're watching headlines now. A few stories from making headlines across the nation now. It's official, says the CBI. The men who organized the Commonwealth Games colluded in systematic corruption. The CBI has arrested Sri S. Darbari and Sanjay Mohindru, two of the men in charge of organizing the Commonwealth Games. Darbari was the director general of the organizing committee and was a close aide of Suresh Kalmari, who served as the chairman and was in fact even booed at in the closing ceremony as a public public protest against the corruption of the games. Darbari has also been arrested for forgery and cheating while handling the Queen's bait and relay in London in September 2009. Kalmari was dismissed last week as the Secretary of the Congress Parliamentary Party. The opposition has been attacking the government over the con congenital corruption that became the trademark of the games. first case was registered against the then Joint Director General Revenue Marketing and Chairman Secretariat, the then Deputy Director General Marketing and a Director, all of Organizing Committee, Commonwealth Games 2010, a London-based transport firm, its Director and others. It is alleged that the accused officials of Organizing Committee in conspiracy with the London-based transport firm and its director awarded work to the said firm at exorbitant rates without following the standard tender process. The work was awarded on the false premise that the firm was on the panel of Indian High Commission London. Now the other big national story at this hour and a shocking revelation, Ratan Tata has disclosed that he did not enter the aviation sector as a minister was creating hurdles for him when he was on this project that was around a decade ago. Ratan Tata said that he was told by an industrialist friend that a minister was expecting his company to pay a bribe of 15 crore rupees to allow him to set up a domestic airline in the mid-1990s. Tata did not name the minister and said that the incident took place 10 to 12 years ago. He also said that he hopes the matter is not taken up for investigation now because it could cast shadows on the wrong person. But meanwhile, one of the ministers during the time period which uh, Ratan Tata was referring to is uh, of that of CM Ibrahim of the Janta Dal. He was the civil aviation minister among the other two ministers, uh, among the three ministers who could have been who the minister he was referring to and he told NETV that Ratan Tata will have to name the minister now or he will have to come How do suicide. you respond to what Mr. Ratan Tata has actually said? Of course, Ratan Tata ji is a very big person. Already their company has filed a case against me regarding that Bangalore International Airport. The case is going on there. And I am very surprised whether honest and nationalist politician can live in this country or not. As far as Singapore Airlines is concerned, at that time we have taken a decision. No foreign airlines should be permitted under Indian soil. That was the policy decision. Even Gulf Air, Emirates Air, they had the share of 25% in jet airways. That also has been disinvested. And I have told Ratan Tataji at that time, you can come on your own. Okay. Don't bring any foreign collaborator. With that policy, I have saved thousands of crores to the country. Today, there are more than 15 to 20 own Indian airlines are flying in the Indian soil. Basically, I'm a son of a freedom fighter. I didn't want any multinational should come into the domestic sector. That was the policy decision. Well, speaking of aviation, media baron Kalanandi Maran has taken charge as the chairman of SpiceJet Airlines following his acquisition of majority shares in the low-cost carrier a few months ago. Now, he may go over for an overhaul 
of the airlines board. An announcement to this effect was made in a board meeting today that was held, and Marin uh, has a clinched, uh, had clinched a deal of uh, about 38.66 percent stake in the non-frills carrier in June for about 70, 750 crore rupees from American investor Wilbur Ross, his investment companies, and uh, a family-owned promoted Royal Holding Services Limited. In what could be the end of the road for Kochi Indian Premier League franchise, sources say that the owners have failed to find a common ground, thereby making the chances for the IPL Governing Council terminating the contract very high. In the upcoming meeting on Wednesday, the troubled owners of the Kochi IPL franchise, which had been served a termination notice by the Board of Cricket Control in India more than two weeks back, seems to have been able to bury, bury their differences. The Kochi consortium was uh, given a 30-day extension to respond to the BCCI notice issued on the ownership pattern of the franchise. And sources say that majority of owners are in favour of giving up the franchise and if Kochi is ousted, the BCCI will hold auction for the 8th IPL team. Time for a quick break, but on the other side, guess which is the new hotspot for a school picnic.